Ciao. This is Mark Marcantonio from WesternBass.com. Today I want to talk a little bit about tips and tricks for mounting transducers like I've done on my Ranger bass boat. On the bow of my bass boat, I've got a Lowrance HDS Live 16 unit. And you'll notice that the lives and also the carbons have two transducer ports. The port that is that I'm pointing to now with the blue connector is referred to as channel one and the outside one in the black connector is referred to as channel two. So that's important to realize that so that when you're discussing it and getting help, you can speak correctly and also to set up your menu that you turn on both channel one and channel two if you indeed are hooking two different transducers up to the same unit. On channel one, on, on this unit, on my bow unit, I have this connected to my um, live sight transducer. It's important, this is one transducer that needs to be hooked up into channel one. On channel two, I've got my ghost trolling motor built in integrated transducer, which covers both my 2D sonar and my down scan capabilities. So channel one, live sight, ch channel two, ghost trolling motor built in transducer. And to see those uh, over here, you'll see my live sight transducer. And I have this live sight transducer mounted to a transducer shield and saver bracket. This transducer shield and saver bracket can be adjusted by loosening these two bolts. And then you can swing or pivot the face of the transducer uh, to be flatter or point it down more and that gives you the ability to uh, be able to see your lure in different conditions. I sometimes flatten it if I want to look if I'm fishing surface lures and I can see bass then crashing on the surface by tilting this up a little bit and then by tilting it into the same angle as the factory bracket it works best for the forward view. But with this bracket, I can also swivel this bracket around on my shaft and point it down. And that gives me the ability to use the down view capability of this transducer for when I'm video game fishing for bass directly underneath my boat. So it's a great strong bracket and a good way to mount that. The nose cone of the ghost, trans, uh, the ghost uh, trolley motor has built into it my down scan transducer and also my 2D sonar for, for looking straight below the boat. There's also a temperature sensor on the nose cone. And this transducer arrangement is fantastic for a couple of reasons. For one, you're using a brushless motor with the ghost trolley motor. So I get zero interference either down scan or regular 2D sonar, I get zero interference because the brushless motor doesn't cause any radio frequencies that disrupt the signal. And then it is also interchangeable. So you can remove this and put a uh, three-in-one transducer basically on here. And there's an optional nose cone that also adds side scan capabilities to this. So very good arrangement. The other good feature about it is your cables are running up the shaft. So you have a very clean insulation and nothing to catch weeds on. At the console unit, you see I've got two transducers that are plugged into the back of this HDS Live 12. Carbons are the same way. Two nine pin uh, ports on the back. One is blue, one is black. The blue one is referred to as channel number one. Black one is channel number two. On channel number one, I have mounted my in-haul or shoot through the haul transducer, which is located in the sump of my bass boat so that I can get high speed reads. This is the transducer I use whenever I'm on plane, running from spot to spot. It'll give me a good bottom reading all the way up to 70 miles per hour. It also works well for finding fish and you can also chirp with it, but you can't do as good of a job as you can with this transducer that I have plugged into channel two. And that is my Airmar TM150M transducer. The TM150M Airmar is a true chirp transducer. It's a lot more expensive, but you get a 
much clearer picture at various different water conditions. That's what's really nice is I can adjust it uh, to suit the water conditions of the day, and it gives me much better reading. So that's the transducer on channel two that I use to mainly find fish, also structure, but mainly to find fish when I'm searching from the console idling around. Now looking at the back of the boat, you'll notice that I've got a 0.1 antenna located on the port side of the uh, transom well. And it's a good location because it's far enough away from the outboard that it doesn't get electromagnetic interference. It's right next to my in-haul, shoot-through-the-haul transducer, which is in the bottom of the boat in the center. And then it's also near my, struck, my um, Airmar TM-150 on the port side and near my 3D structure scan transducer on the starboard side of my jack plate. So this is the 3D structure scan transducer. It's mounted with a transducer shield and saver bracket, which you can see. And this is an aircraft aluminum bracket, T6 aircraft aluminum, very strong. This is the most sturdy way to mount your transducer so that you get the best possible signal and protect that expensive transducer from damage. I've had this transducer since they were first out, and it still works as good as the day it's new because I invested a little extra money on a good bracket to mount it. You'll see it's got protection in the front nose, so if you were to hit a stump, it's still going to be protected, and it's rigid, aluminum, all the way down the length of it so that it doesn't flex and bend, which can break the transducer and the crystals in it. I also put an extension on it. This is a one and a half inch extension. And the reason why I do that is because you want to get this transducer down as low as you can, or basically lower than any other transducer there, so that the signal isn't blocked when you use side scan to either side. You've got a clear line of sight, so there's nothing to block the signal. So that's the transducer shield and saver for the 3D structure scan. You'll also notice I've got a jack plate or a splash well plate under here. And that's another tip because if you don't have one, when you're using side scan, the left side scan signal will um, bounce against the sides of the jack plate and it'll bounce back and forth in the jack plate and it'll give you lines down the center of your picture that basically are annoying and block some of your usable uh, sonar space. So mount this uh, with a splash plate and that'll eliminate that problem. Let's go look at the port side. And on the port side, you see I've got my Airmar TM150M transducer, and it's also mounted on a structure scan um, transducer shield and saver, I should say, uh, bracket with the L bracket. And so this entire unit is custom made for this transducer by Transducer Shield and Saver to protect it. It's got the nose protection, it's got the back protection, and protection all along the top. This is an expensive transducer. It has to be actually shaped to, to fit uh, this bracket and work well. But this protects it, your investment. And again, you don't want to take a chance of crashing this into a stump or a stick and or even the bottom and taking an expensive transducer out or knocking it out of adjustment. And by mounting these on both sides of the jack plate, I haven't drilled a single hole in my transom anywhere. Another very great and important reason why I do it this way. I hope this gives you, you some ideas on how to rig up your own boat to get the most out of your sonar systems. This is Mark Marcantonio for westernbass.com. Ciao.